All right, this came in the mail today. Uh, it's a really nice uh, clamp uh, current, uh, current probe. It's uh, both AC and DC, and uh, it has a, a BNC output, so you can use it on uh, an oscilloscope, or you can actually use it on a, a voltmeter as well. I'll show you both. And uh, it's real nice. Uh, these are usually for fairly mid, mid to high range currents. So, up, you know, kind of 100 milliamps and above. Um, they can measure down sort of into the 20 milliamp range, but uh, they're not really great there. Uh, there's a trick a, a, a viewer uh, talked to me, was answering somebody else's question and said that uh, instead of uh, making a making a clamp, uh, you know, go around a couple times, and then you get, you'll get more, uh, more signals to noise uh, that way. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, they are, like I said, kind of, I, I would say like, you know, 50 milliamps and above range, they're gonna, work, they're gonna operate great. Um, and they, they are AC and DC, so they have active circuitry in it. So there is a nine volt battery in the back. And um, there's a, a power switch so you turn the power switch on and, and it comes on with a green light. And if the battery is low, it'll give you a red light down here saying low battery. There's two ranges. There's really not much, to, not, not much in this thing. There's a, a low range, a high range, and a zero button. And that's it. So, so how do these things work? All right. So uh, you think, oh, well, there must be little coils around in here, you know, somehow. Um, no, that's not actually how they work. Um, there's two C-shaped pieces of steel. Okay, so there's uh, some laminated uh, C-shaped cores. And then at this break and at this break are two Hall effect sensors, okay? And the Hall effect sensor measures the, uh, measures the magnetic fields and things. So um, those two sensors then go into an electronic circuit. So it's basically a differential amp. There's, there's, there's uh, signals from the two, differential amplifier. And differential amplifiers always suffer from offset problems. And that's what the button is for. So before you make a, a measurement, you push the button, it zeroes it, and then you can make a, a, make, make a measurement. So you need to zero quite often with these things. Um, and uh, yeah, so I think let's, let's try it out. Um, and we'll try it with a, with a voltmeter first. All right, so the way I'm gonna set this up is I'm gonna have a, a, a DC current coming from, the, coming from these wires, and I'm gonna run it through an ammeter, okay? So right now it's measuring 0.2 amps, so 200 milliamps. So we have 200 milliamps of, of current going through this wire, and then we'll be able to uh, clip, clip around this wire so if we can measure 200 milliamps uh, with the, uh, the clip-on meter. Now the clip-on meter, like I said, has a, a BNC, so I have a, a BNC to banana adapter here, and we can pop this on. And uh, so we can set this thing to on. And so I've turned the, uh, turned the power on with the with button here. I'm on the lowest range. And um, we are measuring millivolts, okay? And so let me kind of get all the cords straightened out here so I'm not gonna trip her over everything. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so um, we're gonna start out by zeroing. Uh, so that's this button here. I'm gonna push the button in and you can see that we, uh, that we zero there. Now when you let up on it, sometimes it bounces back. Sometimes you need to uh, push on it a couple times. So there we go, we have a good zero. Now I can cl clamp it onto a wire and we're gonna measure uh, uh, millivolts, okay? And millivolts to uh, milliamps are going to be a direct conversion. So uh, you, ma you just multiply by 10. So 21 millivolts is 20, 210 milliamps. And here we have uh, 201 milliamps, okay? And um, this particular unit seems to read a little bit high. Uh, the specs uh, for absolute accuracy are never great for these, uh, for these clamp-on meters, um, but they're, uh, they're really good for, for relative stuff. And they're better at higher ranges. They're, they're, they're a little bit noisier on the lower range because um, the Hall effect sensor has got to work down in the noise there and the uh, differential amplifier is working really, really hard on low stuff. Works better when there's more signal. Okay, so there we go. We're measuring good. We're, we unclamp it. Let's check our zero. Okay, our zero has crept up a little bit. So let's, let's push the uh, zero button again. 
and there's a good zero. Let's clamp it on. And now we're 207 instead of 21. So uh, we're looking at a couple percent uh, errors, right? Uh, two would be 1% error, and uh, uh, so, yeah. All right, so that's probably at the low range. So let's, um, let me increase the current here a bit. Let's go up to half an amp. Here's half an amp, okay? So we're uh, measuring half an amp. Uh, let's go ahead and zero. Oops. All right, and clamp it on. Oops, I did not clamp it on. There we go. And so again, we're measuring a little bit high. Okay, so let's do that zero thing again. All right, and clamp it on. And yet we're measuring, measuring a little bit high. So let's go up to one, one amp. There we go. So measuring almost exactly one amp. Um, pick it up. Let's do the zero. And about 4% high. So yeah, it's about a 4%. That's not too bad. Um, the specifications on this range are actually one and a half percent plus or minus five milliamps. Um, so it's it's definitely uh, definitely doing that well. Um, let's see. One and a half plus five. It's got a good reading. So we're at about 4%. Yeah, it's a little bit high. I think it's maybe, maybe this one's just a tiny bit out of spec. Tiny bit out of spec. All right. The other range, we could click to the other range. It's just gonna make all the numbers smaller. Um, so let's do a zero on this range. All right, there's a zero, clamp it on. So 105, so it's uh, not as much voltage. This is 10.5 millivolts and we were measuring 100, 100 millivolts, okay? So that's the way the scale works. And, uh, but what I really want this thing for is measuring uh, with an oscilloscope, okay? So let's hook that up. All right, so let me explain the setup here. Uh, I have my driver board here. Remember, this is that uh, big uh, driver that can, that can uh, right now it's set up to be able to source a plus or minus one amp. And we're gonna drive it into a uh, load resistor. So I have my 160 watt load resistor. Um, and so uh, we have uh, two things going on. We have a scope probe across the resistor so we can measure the voltage across the resistor. And then we have the uh, clamp meter here on one of the leads going to the resistor. So over on the oscilloscope, uh, we can see two things. Uh, we can see the, uh, the uh, purpley blue trace. Uh, that's the current. From that's, that's from the current probe. And this is the volts. Okay, so volts and current uh, are, are about the same. And... Okay, I've slowed it down so we can kind of get an idea what's going on here. It's going up and down and we're, we're going about plus or minus one amp, okay? So uh, we're drawing about one amp at the top and drawing one amp at the bottom. So plus or minus one amp, all right? And so let's uh, speed things up. And if we come here, we can see that again, it's about plus or minus one amp. Uh, we can go to a, a, a different shape here. And you can just see that current matches um, the voltage, right? And everything is, everything is matching really, really well, really, 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 really well here. Can't talk today. Um, and so what I want to do, though, is I want to re replace the resistor with something that's not a resistor, okay? Then that's where these probes really, really come into their own, all right? 
because obviously volts, volts across the resistor, you could have just done the math instead of having to have a, a clamp on uh, ammeter, okay? But let me show you this, uh, where it really comes into, uh, comes into play. All right, so I'm gonna remove the resistor and uh, we are going to use a DC motor, okay? So I'm gonna drive the DC motor with that same signal and uh, we will measure the voltage across the motor and then we will measure the current uh, across uh, one of the lathes. And you can see that we have something that looks completely different. So now we have an inductive load and we have a varying load. Uh, getting the motor started requires more current. Keeping the motor running, it requires less current. Um, and then having to reverse directions is gonna require a lot of current. And we can see that in the waveform here. Uh, so this is volts and this is current. So this is where it's really, really valuable to, uh, to be able to monitor the current in a particular situation. Um, you know, if you have a, a, an, an amplifier that's driving a speaker, well, a speaker is a coil. It's not gonna, you know, drive it, uh, you know, perfectly and stuff. So you can really, you can really see things here. Uh, we, can go to a, we can go to a sine wave and it's a little bit better, but you can see it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you know, leading, right? Uh, uh, current leads voltage, right? Um, and you can see that here in a, uh, in a inductor. And if we go to a square wave, that's even more interesting, right? Uh, you can see that the uh, current spikes and then to keep the motor running, it doesn't require as much, but then when we go in the reverse direction, it requires more, uh, more current again. Um, We can slow the motor down. We can speed the motor up. Yeah, so this is where uh, this is where these clamp-on ammeters are are very valuable to be able to see things like this. Anyway, so I'm quite pleased with it. Um, I'll put a link down below if you're interested in these things. And um, this is a Hantec CC65. And uh, there are some other brands out there. I've seen other people review them. This one reviews quite well um, from other people that have looked at them. Uh, the build quality is actually really, really good on these as well. I'll put a link down in the description of another YouTuber that actually did a complete teardown on one of these things. And it's very nice inside. It's, re it's, it's, it's really w well constructed. So uh, Hantech is, a, is, is an okay brand. And um, yeah, CC65. I think they have other models as well, but uh, this one seems to be the right um, current ratings and stuff for things I do in the in the garage. This this one has the uh, lowest current uh, for the for the models I've seen. Um, like I said, it goes down to you could you could get away with looking at you know 20 milliamp signals and stuff relatively, not absolutely. Um, it would work fine work fine down in that range. Um, but uh, to be able to look at these really, uh, really big uh, current drivers and stuff, um, I'm working on this project and I want to I get it to a point where I can do about plus or minus four amps. And uh, something like this is going to come, uh, come in real handy when I have to do uh, analysis on that. Um, anyway, there you go.